Welcome to part part B of the Tech Pack tutorial, weapons tutorial line. Um, today we'll be talking about bombs, bombs, and uh, some more bombs. So just to jump right into it, we're in takeoff. I did not show you the radar last time because last time was the flare tutorial, which is the uh, laser tire designator. We'll not be using that, even though I will show you um, how to pretty much look at targets from the radar through it. So we will not be using or lasing any targets today, but I will show you how to use it first day to uh, look at targets. So today we're going to take off. I already have some waypoints set up in uh, F-18 Mission Maker, which I will send the link, put the link in the description. Great tool. Uh, let's you put some objects in the game so we can destroy them. But uh, I already have a bumper com bunker complex set up about 20-30 uh, miles away from here. We're in Fallon right now. So we're going to take off. We're going to use a radar to find those. Uh, look at a uh, program, a target via the radar, and drop a JDAM first. Then we're going to show you how to drop the JDAMs, all the different modes. We're not going to we'll only be using target of opportunity mode, which I'll talk about later. Um, pre plan mode, we'll have to wait to the advanced tutorials because that is a pretty advanced feature. And 90% of the time, you're going to be using target of opportunity, anyways. Um, then we'll swing around, we'll get going again, and we will. Uh, start show you how to drop the different modes of the bomb. I will drop two JDAMs to show you the different modes of the JDAMs. Uh, not using flight director mode today. That's another advanced tutorial thing. We're using uh, the uh, CCIP mode and the auto mode. And we also be using freefall bombs. I have two 83 uh, MD-83s on the airplane which are 1000 pound uh, freefall unguided bombs. Which is pretty much as simple as it gets a pair of fins slapped onto a big, pretty much explosive, and it just grabs ground. No, uh, no fly, it doesn't follow laser, it doesn't follow radar, it doesn't have an INS GPS in it, it's very straightforward. I put the crosshairs on the ground, I hit the pickle button, and it drops and hits those crosshairs. Very simple. I'll show different modes in those. That's about it. So, um, let's go ahead and, uh, get a little closer to these bombs here. Now the JDAM, I'll give you a little history of the bombs here real quick. The JDAM is right here. This is the JDAM that VRS simulates. There's many JDAMs. And what JDAM is, is uh, all it is is pretty much a very thin design. Now they have a laser design, which is the whole nose piece that goes on it. But if you go on the back here, See JDAM ran on the tail, and what that is is a Boeing pretty much snap-on kit. They snap it on whatever the Navy or Air Force snaps on whatever bomb they want. And what that is is it pretty much has a GPS, INS, and gyros in there that will guide the bomb to a target, very preci precise. And that's mainly what the uh, Navy uses now is JDAMs because they're very precise, they're very accurate, and they can get any bomb they want onto a target. They come in many shapes and sizes, but the one VRSS model is a 2,000 pound bomb, the GB-31, with a, uh, the tail, the JDAM tail on it. Uh, there may be a laser JDAM. Laser JDAM actually just came out by recording this video in real life. And what that is, is a JDAM system they use later. It's pretty much a laser-guided JDAM. And uh, VRS said they may, they're looking into it, modeling it. They probably will at some point, since that will probably be the main uh, bomb of choice for in the Navy pretty soon here. Then we have MD-83s. Now these are pretty simple, 1,000 pound bombs. Drop it, they go off. It's very simple, very nice, very effective tool. Now I have four of those on the uh, outer pylons, but I also have a snake eye in the middle. What the snake eye is, is pretty much a little bomb that has a little fins kind of deploy actually, and it slows it down. It's a little more advanced than the uh, MD-83s, and it will uh, it's a it's a 500 pound bomb, and it's it's a little more accurate. It's a little more you can, can control it a little more. It's not guided. It's once again it's a free fall bomb. So um, I like those. I love the snake eyes. Very effective. Very nice for uh, taking a little hut in the middle of nowhere. Pretty much love them. All right, so there's some uh, bomb advice right there, and we'll jump in the cockpit. I already set up uh, F-18 World Maker or whatever it's called, a uh, Living World. I uh, already put two waypoints on the map for me, so I'm not going to go into, because uh, the JDM has so many modes where I can actually go in and put in coordinates of a target, and that will target it. 
I can use the flare or the radar, whatever I want. But um, I already have two waypoints in there that will get me right to the target, so that's what I'm going to be using today. So here we go, we're in the cockpit now. And, uh, let's switch on the, uh, make sure everything's good here. I'm not going to say anything since you guys should know. It's the fourth tutorial, I think, so you guys should be get familiar. I will scan the cockpit like I normally do, like in the later tutorials and advanced tutorials. I'm either going to start in the air, or I'm just going to go. <laughs> Done. Go. Uh, I will point out the major items. Canopy, jettison handle in, parking brake set, lights on, um, gear down, flaps to half, actually uh, off right now. Sorry about that. Uh, master arm switch to safe, uh, jettison button out, the select jettison button to safe, DDI's off, uh, actually no, my uh, dispensers are on for some weird reason. Okay, those are off, hooks up, wing is into the full hold position, left gen, right gen are off, battery's off, all this is good, it bleeds are off, shut the canopy. Yeah, there's a ladder coming up. Okay, battery on. Fire test A. Engine fire. Left. Engine fire. Left. Engine fire. Right. Engine fire. Right. APU fire. APU fire. Lead air. Left. Lead air. Left. Lead air. Right. Lead air. Right. Engine fire, left, engine fire, left, engine fire, right, engine fire, right, APU fire, APU fire, lead air, left, lead air, left, lead air, right, lead air, right. Okay, so cycle the battery switch, so the APU. Alright, good, APU bleed on, right generator on, engine crank to the right. Okay, left generator on, left engine crank on, wait for 50% RPM and left engine on. Well, that's where I'm going to keep an eye on the instruments while we uh, turn all the DDIs. Okay, there we go, engines are started. Bleeds to norm. APU bleed in, APU off. Check the. We have wing on lock, that is fine. We're gonna set the trim. Flaps to half. We have advanced trim on here. We're gonna turn the can off, don't need it. ILS is off, don't need it. Don't need any of these functions today. And we're gonna set waypoint 2 as our target. And all we do that is we go into uh, here, we select the waypoint, waypoint designate, and we select the target box. But for that's only that's for two, waypoint two. This is going to be our waypoint today. That is a target. Okay, also today we will select our rebar to standby, float to standby. Alright, that's about it for right now. We could go ahead and start taxing out. Also, as these videos go by, as you already started seeing from this video, is the uh, video is much right off when we get off the uh, ramp here. The video is going to be a lot more fast paced.
case. And the reason for that is, is you guys are getting a little smarter with the chat. You know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about stuff. So I need to point it out. I can just say it and we can go. We should be off the ground in a couple minutes in the next video. Um, and uh, we should be in the air within five minutes is my goal if it's a short taxi when we get to the advanced tutorials. On a carrier, I can start the airplane up in literally 40 seconds. I mean, it should be coming that quick to you so far. This airplane's not very hard to start up, so once you get the gist of it, you're pretty good. All right, we're already taxiing, so I'm going to add on the ejection seat. Here, once again, you never know when you actually need to use that thing. So it's going to have it always armed. Uh, I'm going to check our FCS while we're on the taxi. Once so again, I'm not going to point out, if you still want the, uh, me to point out the numbers, go back. Either leave me a comment and I will start doing it in the next videos. Or, uh, same thing with the engine numbers, one engine to check for, or just go back to the first tutorial and write them down. Alright, that's good. Brakes. Good. Check our weight in the checklist page. It's good. Throw the ADI up here. So our second waypoint looks like it's going to be almost due south from us. So we're going to take off from this runway as we always do and uh, take a high high performance uh, minimum radius turn to the left and get us on course. And uh, I'm going to fly this thing mostly manually all the way back unless I'm explaining the radar or something. Which, I uh, had some complaints of VRS farms that I wasn't talking about stuff correctly in the tactical video about the radar. I went back, reviewed it in the wiki, uh, and I pretty much got all that stuff cleared up. So uh, I know about the radar. If you were kind of iffy on the radar in the tactical tutorial, just watch this one and it'll explain, I'll explain it all. Oh, that's a glitch. <laughs> Alright, don't mind that. <laughs> it's weird, I've never done that before. Don't break while turning. That's weird though, I've, had, I've done that a lot. I've never had that happen. Hmm. Alright, I'm sorry, the uh, waypoint's almost due north from us. I'm not like, yeah, waypoint's almost due north, so we're actually on the right track. I'm taking this turn lightly. <laughs> And then we ask the low, that'll help. Already on the runway, wings to spread. Lights are on, it's already been checked. We'll turn the landing light on. Uh, everything's good, rig's good. Alright, we're clear to take off. And this airplane, every time these controls start, this airplane gets heavier and heavier because we get, keep putting more ordnance on it. This is going to be the heaviest airplane for a while because we got so many bombs on this thing. It's going to be around 150 on this flight. Home field is a plane. I will fix that on the F pass page once we get in the air here. Fix that right now. There you go. Flaps there. Oh. Yep, 30 miles. Alright, I'm going to kind of disobey what I said here. I will go ahead and, uh, uh, let's see if you'll turn it. There we go. Okay. Go ahead and program that so uh, I don't have to deal with it. I'll line that a little bit. Alright, I'll pilot. What's the problem here? Okay, so radar is on, and flare is on. Also, we can turn the dispenser on, the cham uh, uh, pattern is chamber on, dispenser on, CMWS on, and RWR on. 
Okay. Now, uh, I have fast radar loading up just for the sake of time here. So, there we go. As you see here, we already have the waypoint on the target because I already, when I selected the target box down here, uh, I automatically fed that to the radar and said, all right, this is the waypoint. This is the target. The yellow uh, rectangle type thing here is that the target is signifying that's the target. And the white circle with kind of the uh, arrow, the arrow is pointing to north. And um, that's the waypoint. And I'll show up with any waypoints. So I'm going to put myself on a roll here. There we go. Okay, bolt. Hold. Alright. Heading sec 350. Alright. Now we will go ahead and uh, show you the radar features here in a second. Now let's also flare up the flare, but I will, I do not have the laser target designator on, so um, we don't need to worry about that. I turn declutter mode on and uh, turn the seal up. And as we see, that's where I set the waypoint to be, and that is where our target is, which is a bunch of bunch of bunkers. Now I will go ahead and spin the radar. Okay, the render display. Now this is the common uh, display. The only things we are lacking at the moment is the up arrows to adjust the range, which we do not have because we have a target selected and it's automatically adjusting the range to um, the target. The default range in this airplane is 40 nautical miles for the radar. Now starting up in the upper left hand corner, we have OPR, that means the radar is operational with no errors. And we are in map mode right now. We could turn to GMT mode, which is ground moving target. Our waypoint and target will always show up, no matter what. Uh, just like put down on any mode. Our C mode, this is, uh, once again, I'll talk about this in the Harpoon tutorial, but that is to define ships and it will show moving or non moving. This is terrain avoidance mode. This is going to be in the advanced uh, avionics tutorial, because I really want to show you guys this. this is really cool. Um, but map mode for right now is going to be your normal overlay map mode. I will talk about ground moving target mode because that's a fairly used, often used one in C mode later in those respective tutorials. But for today, we're only going to be worrying about the map mode. Now, air is also switching to our air radar, and uh, that's going to be in the air to air tutorial. Don't worry about that. Don't worry anything about that for now. So we're going to turn back to service mode, which is this right here. Now, uh, down here in the upper, uh, lower left hand corner, we can turn fast mode. The radar is going to go double fast, and uh, the only drawbacks of this doing this is that it lowers resolution of the display, which is you cannot get a very accurate feedback from it. I uh, usually keep it off. I see no reason to keep it on unless for some very weird scenarios. Now what this is, is this shows uh, how many degrees the radar is going to scan from the nose. So 120 degrees, it's going to go all the way to these little to the 120 degrees. If you go back to 20 degrees, it's only going to scan 20 degrees of the radar. Uh, of the airplane front, this 45, it goes out a little more. And it goes out even further. Uh, I keep it on 120 since there's no reason I see to keep it on any other mode. Uh, map, like normal. Let's uh, get back to the menu mode, I mean. Map. Okay, so we go back in radar attack mode. Uh, we turn on data mode, and what uh, this is, I would talk about in the advanced tutorial for bombs and stuff. Uh, don't worry about it right now. But declutter mode, it gets rid of the, your, uh, uh, your artificial horizon, your vector on the display. This this is only really here to make sure, uh, if you're looking at this display, to make sure your noise is point, point in a reasonable direction. So declutter. I usually keep that on. No, I'm also, I would get rid of that. So I can see the radar a little better. Yes, frozen and SLI, frozen mode freezes the display. Um, very uh, nice if you're trying to look at a target and your plane's moving and the radar's moving and you're panicking because you can't see it. Very nice to look at a target. Reset mode will reset the radar. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just resets it uh, if you're in a bad or the radar's not getting very good signatures or whatever. SIL mode. 
this, I would talk about this a little more, but what this is technically is the radar is not sending out any waves to detect the land, but it's only receiving them. So uh, I'll talk about that more in the event tutorial, don't worry about it for now. I'll go ahead and start skin head back toward the waypoint here, hang on. Alright, and the, uh, the range modes, you can only, I'll talk about XP1, XP2, and XP3 once we get to a little closer to our target here, but um, 80 nautical miles, the only thing you really need to learn about 80 nautical miles is the max range, is you cannot use any of the XP's up here past 80 miles, 40 miles is the max range for them. You go all the way down to 5 nautical miles, it's pretty simple, I usually keep it on 40. I'm going to start turning back to the target here. Now, we'll talk about something real quick that you really need to learn about before we, uh, when we use the XP one modes to get us set up in the runner. So, I'm going to go ahead and go right here. What is this? One, one, two, zero. I'll go ahead and say. Uh, one, three, zero. Alright, so we're on heading one, three, zero. Alright, into the good stuff. Now our target's already selected here, so we do not need to press anything or do anything to move that or nothing. It's set, we're ready to go. So if we hit XP1, and all these is is pretty much refine that radar and scan the radar in that area. So uh, what this is, is taking that little block around our target and zooming in pretty much. It's just a high resolution image, very nice. XP1 is a, it's a very big block. XP2 is a little smaller, so you get a little more detail. Um, very nice. If we go to XP3, which is the pretty much smallest range, before it to go back and forth a couple times. There we go. So now I'm going to pick that up because for some reason some objects haven't loaded yet. Hang on. Oh, yep, there we go. the most refined radar view we can. Now, I will talk about trying to find targets later, but if we go and put our T to C on this display here real quick, left, we have our, whoa, we have our captain's bars, is what the, the Navy calls it, and uh, this is pretty much our targeting. Now, most of you are probably wondering, oh, this has got to be a pain in the ass to target with this little thing. If we hit enter once, now we get these, like, uh, two bars, which is the X and Y pretty much axis. We can move these around and uh, say we wanted that little bunker way over here. And these little blobs here is uh, feedback from the radar. These little white blobs, that is a sim object in FSX, and that's something you can destroy. Um, that's pretty much what I need to learn in this airplane. In the real airplane, that's feedback from the radar, which is like a building, a moving car, or something, cars, whatever. So if we put our little crosshairs on that building, or bunker in this case, and enter, what that would do is automatically target that. Now that has been targeted. Now if we see on the floor here, we selected uh, this bunker, it's automatically selected. That's a little off because the radar can't get that fine. And, uh, so there you go. Now our, our target is selected. We use our uh, heads up display here. Well, I don't know it's right, why it's right there. Hang on. Alright, well, Flo's got it correct, so. Alright, so that's our target, and that's how you target with the radar. Very basic. I don't know why it's not targeted anymore. You know, I'll get out of the flare here. Yeah, I'll wait now. I don't remember, because this cannot see the, uh, the target at the moment. So we'll go ahead and get out of this here. Before crashing the mountains. Alright, so we have a target selected. Now, this is pretty much basic how to get a target with the radar. Now, I'll show you by hand here in a second how to do it. 
but um, which I will actually probably do right now because it'll be kind of cool. So let's go heading select mode two eight zero. Okay, so we're gonna on this display we're gonna hit shift delete to get rid of the target. What that will do is get rid of it and we'll go back to 40 nautical mile range. Now if I knew there was a target right next to me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little more range between me and this target because that's very close for the radar and that's going to have to work fast. And that's, we want to get us set up pretty far away to find a target. So if you know the target's world war miles away from you, you want to know that because you got to get set up to a certain um, distance away from the target to start looking for it. Now, the thing about the XPs is, I forget what they're called, <laughs> hang on, um, is they're Doppler radars. It's a use of Doppler radar. So you can, if you have an XP zone set up right in front of your nose, or your target set up right in front of you, and you're trying to get a higher resolution image of it, um, what's going to happen is, it's you're going to see a black space, and the radar's not going to scan that. The reason is that is it's directly at the nose. Now, I'm not going to go into the very thing how Doppler radar works and everything, but just do not get in front of the node. That's why if you're in front of the, directly in front of the target, you're not going to use the XPs because it's Doppler radar and you're going to get a bad image. So come in, I like to have my, my target about 20 to 45 degrees off the nose. So I can usually see it on the radar and it gives me a very clear image of it on uh, Doppler radar. High resolution images with the XP modes. Um, now I'll show you that here in a second. So. So uh, we're going to turn back here and uh, say we're going to be looking for a target here. Now the VRS, uh, what you're going to be looking for is the light box, black box on the radar screen. And it's going to be showing something, the radar's picked up something. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on that with the XP. So I'll show you that in real time here in a second. So there's our target, waypoint 2 right there. Now uh, I hit shift delete on the radar to be uh, to get rid of our target because uh, and it automatically just got rid of it on the HSI too and automatically got rid of that target block. Alright. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get rid of the range here a little bit. We've got 20 mile range. Uh, this waypoint block is going to really end up out of the way here. Next. This is hard to see because the waypoint little thing is in the way, but alright, so we can zoom in any spot on the radar using this tool right here. And I'm using the TDC, I hit XP1, I hit the TDC controllers, and I, I can move this around pretty much anywhere. The screen is frozen for now, it automatically freezes it. I can hit enter, and that'll automatically zoom in on that area. Now it'll go back and forth looking for whatever is there, whatever is there, whatever can be there. And there's nothing. So we're going to get rid of that. Now see, all right, I'm going to use Slee to get us a very good distance apart from this waypoint. I'm sorry about this, guys. All right, there we go. All righty. So now we have a very blank radar because there's nothing but desert in front of us, and it's not picking up anything. So normally, if this waypoint thing was a here and you're looking for a normal target, um, you'll see a very big signature on the radar. So if we zoom in like that and say we saw it, and we'll likely zoom in on that, give us a better image resolution of it. Now, if you see this little black line right here, that means it's in front of our nose. So we're going to turn over right a little bit so we can get a better image of that. There we go. Alright, so we're going to use XP2 to zoom in on our waypoint, which is also the target we're going to be looking for. Uh, let it go back again. There you go. Let's give it a little better image. Now this looks interesting right here. Oh, whoops. I've been full afterburners a time. Wow. Refuel. Cheat a little bit here. This looks... This, uh oh. Where'd it go? So once again, we're going to zoom in on our waypoint which we knew the target is. XP3. Let's so zoom in on that even further. Whoa. Yeah, hang on, waypoint 2 is right in front of me. Now, 
Yes, yeah, so I am really sorry about this tutorial, so not going very well. But, um, there we go. So we got our targets, we found it. So say there's something on the radar that we want to check out. Now, once again, guys, I'll probably even do like another tutorial or remake this one or something, because I'm going to show you, without the waypoint, what to look for. I'll actually do that on the ground, maybe target at when that comes out, I'll show you guys to go to that one if you have a little more clear. So once you get the captain bars, hit enter, go to one of these buildings. Alright, that's a good target designation. Hit it, automatically designates the target, sits all the instruments in the cockpit, that's the target. So it's going to appear on the HUD, on the HSI, and uh, if we turn on the flare, it's going to appear on the flare. You check the target with the flare. Uh, we're still a little too far away to get a clear flare image. Not gonna worry about it. Stupid FSX. Can't zoom in on it because FSX. All right, so we're gonna use the store page, and we're gonna drop our first JDAM on the target. So we hit J84, which is our JDAM, and mode TOO, which is target of opportunity. Uh, TOO is target of opportunity, which means if you already have a target in the airplane and you just want to drop the bomb right on that target, that's all you want to do. That's what you're gonna be using. Pre-plan mode, I would go in the advanced tutorial. That's if you can actually drop the bomb at a certain coordinates and the bomb will hit a target at certain coordinates. I uh, will talk about that more on the harpoon because the harpoon you can actually set the missile to search for a target um, once you fired it from the airplane. So uh, timing right here, that's just timing. Uh, this is what you really want to worry about here. Is if we turn on air to ground mode in the airplane. You get 05 marginal. That means the INS and GPS are pretty accurate at the moment, but marginal, we want a 01, which is good. Now, I mean, the GPS is very accurate. It's ready to go. It's the, the bombs warmed up, ready to go. So we're gonna, that's going to count down to 1. Now, if we pull up the data page, it's going to show us the uh, stuff. Once again, pre planned mode stuff. We don't need to worry about it for now. Uh, but if we go to JDAM display, this is norm release mode. Here's what we're going to be able to know. Auto, F flight director, manual. Manual is pretty much if you pull the trigger, the bomb's going to drop no matter what. Um, if the arm switches into the arm position, I can pretty much pretty much hit the pickle button right now, the bomb will drop. Um, we're not going to be talking about that. I see no use for that. I'll talk about them more in the dumb bomb tutorial uh, when we get to dumb bombs here. But we're going to be talking about release mode auto for right now. So step mode is going to step into uh, weapons quantity. We can drop two bombs. I'm going to set it to one bomb since two JDAMs is a little excessive. Uh, declutter it. Declutter the page. It's pretty much the same as any other page we talked about. Gets rid of a bunch of information. So in our record, he's 01. It's good. Uh, so we're ready to drop the bomb pretty much. Now the GPS and the missiles are at the bomb. The JDAMs already found the target. It knows the target. Uh, and the bombs are already warmed up, ready to go. So all we need to do here on the HUD, it says Auto G84 TOO. That's um, Auto Auto JDAMs ready to go, and it's in target of opportunity mode. So now, as we just came around and started aiming our at the target, we see a lot of new information up here, which I will pause once I get. And you're going to see this bar, this green bar come across the screen. What you want to do is line the center of this air. You want to have that bar right off the nose. Okay, I will pause now. So, starting in here, this middle bar that's going right down to the target. That's pretty much where the target is on a vertical. So, what we want to do is put the velocity vector right in the middle of this, or get right in the middle of our uh, artificial horizon, and that will position the airplane right above. This is very important for free fall bombs if you're trying to hit a target. For JDAMs, it really isn't because they can fix. If they so I can drop the bomb right now, it'll hit the target dead on because it's guided. Um, but just get a general area, you're good. This little bar right here it comes on the screen, appears on the HUD at uh, 10 seconds to the bomb. It's supposed to release. And when it gets to this little triangle here, that's when it's pretty much as a visual indication. You're, t you're in range, you can drop the bomb. TMR, this is timer, uh, 7 seconds so we drop the bomb. We're, we're in zone. You can drop the JDAM after this in uh, dumb bombs you have to drop it at one second pretty much um, auto mode let's get already talked about those too 7.2 mono nautical miles to target this is our clock sorry hang on a second 
Now TOF is target is time and type of time of flight. And that's thirty eight seconds. So when I drop hit the pickle button the bomb gets released off the wing. It's gonna take thirty eight seconds for it to hit the target. Pretty self explanatory. Um A and L kill time, that is a uh, we are good, our GPS is loaded, it's very accurate, we're ready to go, we're ready to drop the bomb. Loose mode auto quantity one, so we're in auto mode, which is auto mode is pretty much it just can tell me exactly when to release the bomb. Uh, quantity, we're dropping one bomb. So uh, we're good on those pages, we're pretty much set to drop the bomb. So when that timer drops down, I usually just release it at one, uh, what I do. When, uh, when we get to one second and it goes in zone, appears right here. I will hit the pickle button and the bomb will release off the wing. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get, get the bomb lined up. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second. Get it in range and in zone indication. Drop the bomb. Bombs off the wing. Now we're actually going to go to the flare right here and show us hitting the target. It's very shaky. <laughs> so we're going to go actually go in a wide view, wide field of view mode. Now 38 seconds. Now if we actually go to the JDM page, 28 seconds. If we drop it right now. So here's the. Uh, here we go. All right, watch the screen. There we go. If you saw up here in the upper right corner, it said it was a timer cut timing down, and that's timing down to the jump the JDM until it hits the target. It was like one second off, that's how accurate it is. So as you see on the right hand flare we have hit the target dead on. Um it's a good kill. See how powerful those things are we took off half of it. Now if I put the JDM in the middle I probably would take out the entire bunker complex. But um, so successful hitting the target. So uh, I want to show you something we can we don't even need to use the uh, we don't need to use the um, radar to jump JDM. Once we get, if we give, if the flare, you know, once if I select the target the flare, um, the airplane will know it's coordinates, so we can use the JDM. The JDM just needs target coordinates, that's all it needs to uh, operate. Target elevation, coordinates, etc. It is not, it doesn't need to use a laser or anything like that, so, alright. Use our standard procedure to find the program and you target the flare. Right there. I'm actually reprogrammed the JDM display to show us uh, what we are in. We're in AGR mode, which is it's using the uh, flare. We are in zone right now, so we can actually just tr drop the bomb right now. And uh, it's see that in zone Q and everything is nothing's X, X down here, you can drop the bomb. So here we go, here's our clock. We have 14 seconds to go. 10 seconds to go. That was, I heard an explosion. Alright, it's a little ahead of schedule. Alright, so we hit the we hit the target again. All right, very good hit. Congratulations, you just dropped two JDAMs on target. All right, so we use the flare in the radar to select a target and drop a JDAM on it. Very nice. Okay, now the fun part. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get through all of these guys. I'll probably just do this. Now, most of you probably want to... Uh, on the stream, guys, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all these free fall bombs because it's getting pretty late here, but you know what? We'll do it. Why not? We just have to go fast. So we can actually drop these bombs on the target like we just did. All we have to do in auto mode is like that bunker right there. Boom. The airplane wants to kill that bunker right there, the one that's left. We can use a free fall uh, unguided bomb to do that easily. So right there, I'll show you the page here again. So in auto mode, which we are in mode mode is auto, uh, we are going to drop one bomb one at a time. That's kind of, we know that. Um, so all the airplane is auto mode is if we have a target, which 90% of the time you will, um, 
it's pretty much telling you if you're exactly lined up with this middle bar. Where this is really important because these bombs are not guided; they're free fall bombs. So if you get in line with this and drop in 10 seconds, waste 10 seconds, that bomb will fall and hit that target. That's it's computing. Okay, if you drop at this time, it will hit the target. So it's very important this not to get that time to get that time uh, be accurate is to maintain your speed. And I will show you this. So we're going to engage the auto throttle. Try to keep that for say a little that line right there, um, our visionary line of where the target is, right in the center of the HUD and on the velocity vector. So we'll show you that. Whoops. We have the same little bar coming down from the HUD that we did with the chain. I'm telling us to release it. Auto throttle. Two. One. Go. Bomb away. We dropped one bomb. We're going to watch the flare. Okay. Now remember, I did not have my laser on. Nothing. This bomb was completely unguided. Going for the explosion. There we go. Explosion. Uh, it's kind of hit by the smoke. Can't see the effects, but uh, VR has applied some very nice effects for these weapons. Okay. So there you go. There's how to drop a free fall bomb on the target. Now. If any of you watched the Facebook video I posted in the FSX Facebook page, I've made dropping like three at like at the it was seven at a time. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And this is a really cool feature. Before we do that though, I'm gonna go through the modes. Um, Alright, so uh, flight director mode, I'm not gonna talk about that. All that is pretty much is it's gonna t it's gonna guide me to the target. And if we hit CPL bank, the uh, autopilot will guide me right to the target with a certain degree as a bank. So I can pretty much put 45 degrees, so it's going to tell me how to get the target with 45 degrees bank. Pretty simple. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. I hate using that mode. i got to learn more with it. I will talk about that in the next tutorial, most likely. Uh, CCIP mode. Love it. This is the coolest mode ever. Um, and what this mode is, is it's pretty much the computers in the airplane generating a path that appears on the HUD. It will appear later. Now that's when I'm going to drop these bombs was right here real quick. You know, have some crosshairs on the ground. Now you always can't see the crosshairs because they're you can't see them in the HUD. Uh, you'll sh oh, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. But it, when I hit the if those crosshairs are over target, I hit the pickle button right then. That bomb will drop and hit that and hit that um hit that building or whatever it is. The t whatever I just have to put the crosshairs over a target, hit the pickle button, and that bomb will hit that target. The airplane's computing that bomb's path, and it will hit that target. It's different for every bomb. Now, um, manual mode, once again, I really don't see the point of this. Um, unless you're dive bombing, it's very inaccurate. All it is is a reticle on the HUD. I'll show you real quick. And I'll pretty much show you. It's it's not a generated path or anything. That's all it is. It moves around it a little bit, but it's pretty much just telling you. It's not giving your so I could drop it right now, but it's not going to land right there. It's going to land way back here. So I don't really see any use for it. Uh, now, when, the, when I'm dropping shit games and stuff, I love using it because all I do is hit the pickup button and the bomb will still follow. It's got a path, but in free fall bombs, I don't see the point of it. So if we go to auto mode, once again, I just showed you that. It's pretty much the same thing as any other bomb or weapon. You know, it'll, if you have a target, it'll compute it and tell you when to drop the bomb. So I'm going to hit console right switch and hit shift delete to get rid of the target. So the target's gone. So now we can. I won't get any weird indications. Turn off the flare. So AGR is saying we are in a targeting mode, which we are not. Okay, CCIP mode. So if you see these little crosshairs on the ground, there you go. That's if I drop it right now, we're hit. But but we have a dead indication right here. So if I drop it, the bomb won't have not have enough time to arm. It before it hits the ground. So when it hits ground, it'll, it won't do anything. It won't explode. So, alright, now I'll talk about the other modes here. If we go to a program. Now, what's telling me now is what I'm going to show you this. This is how we do it. It's showing me I can jump three bombs, two at a time. Multiple is two. That means I can drop two at a time. And INT is going to be how far those bombs are apart from each other. So, if I jump right now, those bombs will land 76 feet apart from the first bomb. The second bomb will be 76 feet apart from the first bomb. Now we can change these by selecting UFC. You know, it will pop up here. And what I can do is hit multiple. I only drop one drop, one bomb at a time. Hit one, enter, boom.
Now I'm going to drop four bombs, which is actually three, because I only have three of them. Um, one at a time. I can change this to all the way up to, I think it was 60,000 feet. Um, I forget the exact, but I don't think anybody's going to want to do that. So, uh, to demonstrate, I'll drop them 750 feet from each other. Now, for your program again, uh, we can drop, that's uh, flight director mode, that's how did you do it via that. Um, this is two, so we can drop two at a time. That's also very nice. One at a time, that's single, uh, single bomb drop at a time. And this one is what I just said, it's the settings. So we can uh, select CCIP mode. And uh, I'm going to pull up here and I'm going to jump three bombs, one at a time, 750 feet. Now, when you when I drop these, I can use CCIP mode. I'm not going to use a target. I can just this works with the target too in auto mode. But um, I'm going to hit the pick, pickle button. But instead of just hitting it once, I'm going to hold it down so all the bombs are gone. Since I drop them all off the wing, and um, I have to keep holding that. Now, if I first say one, only when I drop one, and I'm already in that mode, all I have to do is hit the pickle button once. It'll drop one, so I can cancel it at any time. I'll show you that. Yeah. Alright, I'm not gonna really look, so we say we're gonna drop it there, hold the pickle button down there with one gone, two gone, three gone. Alright, now the airplane has programmed the weapons to drop it at the time interval it takes for them, so they will drop 750 feet apart from each other. One, two, three, 750 feet apart from each other. Beautiful. Love it. My coolest feature on this airplane, in my opinion, for bombs. Alright, so the only bomb we have left here is the Snake Eye. Alrighty here. So the Snake Eye uh, is just a normal unguided bomb like I just showed you, but we have some new options here. We have the drag uh, selection key. FF is going to deploy those flaps. Uh, retract means the, flap, the little tail is going to retract, and um, it's not going to have any drag. It's, it's going to be like a normal freefall bomb. FF, what I'm going to show you here, is it's going to give the bomb a little more stability. So I'm going to use CCIP mode. I want to drop it right there. Hit the pickle button. We'll get rid of that. Air traffic, show you right here, is... Actually, no, I... Oh, yeah, shit, hang on. Alrighty. Actually, hit the wrong mode. Hang on. There we go, I already sent the airplane. Alrighty, so, whoops, not my bad. Retract mode is when the flaps come out. I'm, I'm, guys, I'm, I'm tired. So, um, it's kind of end of the day. Uh, I most likely will redo this, this is pretty bad. But, um, alright, so, so I'll show you that real quick. So I want to drop it there, hit the pickle button, and I will show you the cool thing about these. Is there we go. The flaps to deploy gives a little more stability, slows it down so I can actually be much closer to the target and drop it. Boom. It is a very tiny explosion if you set the puff of smoke, because it's a very tiny ball. Alrighty. If you see this little arrow right here, it's telling me the uh, crosshairs are a little far out. I oh, it's playing the crosshairs a little far out because they're actually below the airplane. I cannot see the crosshairs on the ground because uh, they're, they're pretty much crosshairs. Are sh I, it's not my field of view. The crosshairs are actually down here. Way down here, per se. So. Alright, so that's what that little mark means. Is It's below you. It's way below you. So, Alright. Uh, I'll show you gun mode real quick. Just another thing I can tack on. Alright, so we have a target selected. I'll just select one real quick for you. Alright, so gun. <laughs> this is so fun. The uh, gun, because now, oh yeah, we can check the, uh, we can change radical, how big it is. Small it is. There we go. 
that's how you do that. We'll explain that more later in the advanced tutorials. Um, remember, anybody, like, anybody, any guy that's been on the forums of ERS who's flown this airplane, it's, I'm going to sound like so, like, simple and trying to push everything to the advanced side. So remember, this is just for people who want to blow crap up at the moment. So, um, that's all I'm doing this for the advanced tutorials. I will go in, research very hard, and learn everything. Um, but since I already know m most of this, it's just all the little definitions and the hidden stuff I will go back and refresh my mind with. <laughs> I just want to get that out of the way. So CCIP mode, it's a computer generated path. This little radical in the HUD here is going to move around. And, uh, wherever it's pointed, I can shoot the gun and it will bolt to land there, pretty much, basically. Um, the only exception to that is if you're in the air, it's not going to land way out here because the gun only has a two, mile, two nautical mile range. If you see this little thing coming down here, it's because when I get close to this target, I'm one point eight, so I'm still pretty far away from it for the gun. When it gets down to here, that means I'm going to be in range. It's counting down to this little hash mark right here. Once I'm there, I will be in range. I could shoot the gun, and the bullets will fly and land at the target. Manual mode is pretty much the same as the. I pretty much have to be dive bomb to get this correct, um, but it's just radical. Pretty, it's it's just a manual, pretty much manual mode. It's very manual, you kind of have to judge your distance from the target, when to fire, so forth. For you beginner, CCIP mode is the only mode you want to worry about. So kind of, this is bad when you're not in a dive bomb. So with that low, target's radicals on the target, it said in range shoot, and I put bullets right on the target. Very cool feature, gun's extremely easy to use in the air-to-air -air mode, gun I will show you in the air-to-air -air tutorial. Gun's extremely fun to use in this airplane. Alright, so that's about it for the gun. Oh yes, I can actually change if I want a high rate of fire or a low rate of fire. So... That's a low rate of fire. Very slow, this is the high rate. See the difference there? It's much more bullets coming out of the front end of that thing at a high rate of fire. So, I uh, usually want to keep it on high though. Alrighty. Alright, I'll go ahead and turn back for Fallon. So we're going to save, uh, take off radar ground mode, turn off our dispensers, we don't need them, turn our radar off or flow off, and so we have an Fallon. Checklist up. Feel up, okay. Okay, Fallon is waypoint 1, so we're going to select waypoint 1, waypoint. CPL waypoint. Uh, I cannot do that when I'm in a 25 degree bank. Freaking 75 degree bank angle here. Whoops, there we go. Okay. CPL waypoints. There we go. Okay. So I hope that I might as well explain the radar a little bit more here. Show you a better scenario with it. So the radar isn't showing anything up because it's not. There's nothing in front of me. It's just desert. I can zoom in all I want, pretty much. I'm not going to see much. See one right there. It'll give me a little better picture and if there's anything on the ground there. That's in the front of my nose since I can't see Fallon. Uh, Naval Air Station because it's in front of me. So there's pretty much nothing out there. It's desert. Now when we get to the missions, this is going to be a very key feature and I will show you because I'll actually have some objects on the ground everywhere. Not in front of waypoints so you can't see them. Uh, stuff in it. This is desert. There's nothing out here. I should have picked a better. I'm tired. Guys, <laughs> I need to really do redo it. Uh, I'll probably just have a complete radar tutorial guide. That's probably what I'll do. If you guys didn't get that, uh, just use the flare for now, I guess. This is extremely hard. It's not hard to learn. It's just hard to show off if, you're, if you don't have the right scenery and stuff for it to, to use it. Alrighty, so... Okay. 
it's off. Oh, that's it's that's worth it off. Is it's just a uh, white square with a little kind of big square. That's pretty much telling you it's off. Okay, 22, 22 nautical miles. Let's engage that. I'll land on the other runway today, the uh, north facing or south facing runway, I mean. Gonna turn a hook to field mode. Reset our warnings, there we go. Alrighty. We are well within our landing rate. Just like point that out. I'm sorry guys, this was a little weird tutorial for C. It's like not as deep, like very straightforward as the other ones. It's because it's a lot of information I had to cram in. My script's like four pages long. Um, so, sorry about that guys. I will do a complete tutorial. If you guys, if that was unclear for you on YouTube, just post it in there. If I was very hesitative, like almost new kind of sounded like I didn't know what I was talking about. So in there, I will redo the tutorial. I'm just, I'm tired. It's been a long week, so um, if you want me to redo it, just put it in there. I will redo it. That's totally fine with me. If that was unclear or something for you. If you want to see something, I will be doing a full radar tutorial guide per thing. Alright, so we're going to do almost a kind of a left pattern today. Um, I mean a right pattern. We're going to join in a 90 degree angle because we're going to be using our normal runway we should normal right now I'm not going to learn these runway numbers um, so we're going to take a left turn uh, put the gear down and we're going to kind of take a uh, I guess we'll do a normal okay we'll do a normal break over the uh, runway with the normal carrier pattern so we're way down that's what we kind of see because usually you come in you break you turn go around and come back and land. We're just going to go straight forward, turn left for our downwind, come back and land. You'll see what I'm talking about here if you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Alright, 300 knots. 260, 250. Get down. Speed brakes go off automatically. Alright. Get pretty much ready here. Turn radar mode on so we can get a radar temper instead of a barrel one so we get a better idea of how, how far we're off the ground. World's well, worst carrier landing coming up, guys. I'm way too close. Yeah, I gotta take this wide. Yeah, okay, there we go. Take this wide here. Kind of look back around. There we go. terrible today. Oh man. Alright, down on the ground. Go through a checklist. Wings in the hold position. H. Oh, oh why did I put the hook down? Man. Alright, there we go. Just go to high, give it a little more braking, flaps up. What else in here? Seat unarmed. Landing light off. All 
Alright, welcome back to Fallon. After that, whatever that was. <laughs> We gotta take a left turn. In we go. Um, maybe I'm gonna do a tutorial of mine. I'll have to see, guys. Go for that one we'll park up here. Take it out on my parking spot. Is some fresh air after that one. Alright, park, bleeds off, engines off, lights off, generators off, TDI's off, head off, all the normal parking brake set, skin off, flaps off, good to go. Alright. Thanks guys for miserably sticking through me with that one, but um, let's get if you want me to see you redo it, I will redo it, don't worry about it. Next tutorial will be, um, I will touch a little bit more on GPS guided weapons, which should be JDAMs, but I will do like long range like slammers, which are like over the horizon, um, bombs with like wings on them, small diameter bombs, stuff like that, those are really fun, um, if you know how to use them. And uh, special weapons, harpoons not harms that will be in the I will touch on a little bit but that'll mostly be in the SAM to air to air uh, to the AAA defense defense and uh, getting out of the way of SAMs and stuff that'll be in that tutorial since that's pretty much all that weapons used for but um, around that harpoons will be a major part of it uh, harpoon missiles which is uh, air to sea that's a very fun missile to, if to learn and stuff so that's the most advanced weapon, I think, in this uh, airplane. Because you, you can do so much with it. But alright, thanks guys. Thanks for sticking around, and uh, see you later.